over the balcony again. Last time I feel like I veered more bohemian. This time I want to incorporate more of a classical feel. I want it to be another room, one that feels really intimate and cozy. One of the main things I intend to incorporate on the balcony is an affordable DIY palette sectional. With the help of one of my dear friends, also my boyfriend's sister, um, I was able to locate some places that are giving away wooden palettes for free. As you can see, it's, or maybe you can hear it, it started raining outside and I didn't want the palettes to get damaged. So I brought them all up. So we got the three palettes for free from a tile shop. I did map out a blueprint of the balcony that streamlined my shopping process. Also jotted down some of the main things I knew I wanted to incorporate in this makeover. We also made a trip to Savers where we had this really lucky find. It was a netted door with magnetic closures and we got it for $4 and 50 cents. Later in the week, I visited this really cool plant shop with my boyfriend and another friend. Uh, to gather some inspiration, and I also came away with three new plants. The palettes needed to be resized to line up in the front, so I repositioned the plank and I also cut them down with a handsaw. But surprisingly, what? Wait, say that again? Wait, where? New York? I don't know. I, I think it was just the Mafia, and the Mafia um, used the pizza place as a cover-up. I could either kill you or you could buy me. You, you can buy a too large pizza. <laughs> That's what mafia do. That's how the mafia do. Yeah. I removed the metal door and I replaced it with the thrifted screen that I found. Mounting it was simple. I just used the text that it came with. I also did a performance check on the door and the verdict is that it's pretty awesome. It's going to allow people to access the adjacent corner on the balcony a lot more easily um, as opposed to the door that opened only, only 90 degrees. There's a lot of palette sectional DIYs already out there, but rarely are they free beyond the wooden palette part. The cushions usually are very expensive. I don't know if you know this, but buying upholstery foam by the yard is also very expensive. The solution I've come up with is to scavenge for people's discarded couches. If you can't find one for free, you can also find cheap couches at a thrift store and ask if maybe you can just buy the cushions so you don't have to lug a whole couch home. I would recommend checking for bed bugs and make sure the sizing is either exactly or larger than your project. And you could potentially save yourself nearly $200 like I did. Most upholstery foam for couches is not meant for the outdoors, but I would recommend just taking in your cushions when it rains or just covering your furniture with a tarp. Um, but I decided that I was going to purchase some waterproof outdoor fabrics and make cushion covers myself. I could stop there and keep the cushions and wood as they are, but I'm actually going to be staining it with outdoor deck stain in the color sun soaked oak just to give it additional protection from the rain and let it dry overnight. I wanted some extra decorative elements for the balcony and so I found this vase that gives me classical age of ancient Greece. We also went to Target and my boyfriend's sister contributed this really beautiful outdoor rug. She also generously allowed me to use some other things from her own collection for this balcony makeover. They included a coffee table, throw pillows, blankets, electric candles from Ikea, waterproof curtains, and solar string lights. I bought these palm fans to pull in those Southeast Asian jungle core 
buds. I got these organizer cups, curtain rods, and curtain hooks from Ikea. Pretty much everything else were things that I previously owned, except for some outdoor fabric, which I ordered from Sailrite. First, I cut the cushions down to the same size as the pallets with an electric saw. And then I seam ripped the zippers off of the original cushion covers to reuse. So I'm actually going to be repurposing the foam that I've taken out of the cushions I got from the couch I found in the attic that's not being used. I'm actually going to be following this pattern that you can generate yourself from the Sailrite website. It's called the Fabric Calculator. Just scroll all the way to the bottom and you can generate this pattern based on your own personal measurements. Sailrite's videos on YouTube are also very, very concise. And if you're watching this, I would just like to work with you if you'd have me. I'm going to be following Sailrite's 30 minute uh, box corner cushion cover tutorial, which I will link in the description. I readjusted the solar pendant light so the wires looked more snatched and secured it on two self-tapping hooks by knotting both sides. I also marked where the curtain hooks would be mounted, but I didn't have much arm reach so my boyfriend helped me with the rest. I DIY'd this wall planter using cheap wood shivs from Blows and some wood glue. I simply spaced them one inch apart and then glued them onto two longer sticks. With some black spray paint, I repurposed a wooden base I owned to update it a bit before I begin the best part, styling the balcony. So I just finished editing everything together and I am so thrilled with the way that this balcony makeover turned out in the end. I had a lot of fun during this process. It was also a lot of hard work and I was working in the humidity. Um, <laughs> but I am so looking forward to doing more design and styling related content in the future. So stay tuned for that. And... Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it too. Bye.
upside down. Oh, it's okay. Why do they even have the same effect, Lisa? It's beautiful. Oh, this is so gorgeous. Viewers don't know it, but I put in a lot of effort. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. 